and you're not your own, oh, what a statement is that. And you're not your own, for you've been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You are not your own. You are not your own. You belong to Jesus Christ. You're in trouble with the Holy Spirit. Therefore glorify God in your spirit and in your body, which are God's. Your soul is not your own. Yes, we talk about my soul. You speak of your soul, but the soul belongs to God. You say, but wait a minute, Brother Robertson. I can take my soul and do as I please with it. If I want to, I can give my soul to God. If I don't want to, I can take my soul and let it go to hell. That's right. In the overall picture, God has commanded that. God has commanded that. And if you're saved, you're saved with the grace of God. And if you're a child of God, it's because God, through Jesus Christ, will save your soul. And if you're lost, you're lost because God said the soul that doesn't believe in Jesus Christ is going to hell. And it's all God's. It's all God's. And God has complete control. And God has complete direction. In all things, your soul belongs to God. Christ died for the souls of men. He died for the eternal souls of men. And unless we come to Him and receive Him, then we're lost and condemned and hell bound. You are an eternal being. Again, you must face God one day. One of these days, you must come before the Lord. One of these days, Christian, you must stand at the judgment seat of Christ. And there give an account of yourself unto God. For Paul said, For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Again, he said, So then every one of us shall give an account of himself unto God. Every Christian, every Christian, yes, the soul belongs to God. And God wants to save your soul. And God wants to give you eternal life, sinner friend. And Christian friend, your soul belongs to God. And it's by the power of God that you're a child of God and that you're saved. Today, today, if you could stand to say, I'm a child of God, it is not because of your works. It's because of His work. It's not because of your blood. It's because of His blood shed on Calvary's cross in your behalf. Your soul is not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Remember, you have new life in Christ. Remember, you are eternal. You'll never die. You live forever. Remember, you have the Holy Spirit indwelling you. Remember, you have Christ himself. For Paul said, Christ liveth in me. Remember, you have nothing to fear. He said, fear not. I will be with thee. Remember, you have a task to preach the word of God and to give the message of Christ, present the gospel. Remember, you have a goal to be Christ-like. Now follow in the steps of the master and uh, follow him in faith and then follow him in life. Follow him day by day. This means separation from an evil world. Christ-likeness. Follow him will give you purity in your life. And the need of this hour. Don't be afraid to, to be separated. Don't be afraid to preach the gospel uh, of Christ and to talk about separation from the world for those who believe in Christ. Don't conform to a sinful world. Again, follow him in prayer. Christ prayed. John 17 as an example. But see Christ praying in the garden. Father, thy will be done. Follow him in prayer. And follow him in the fullness of the Spirit in Luke 4, 1. And Jesus being full of the Holy Spirit. And say, yes, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want God's fullness upon my life. I want his power in my life. And I want to be empty of self and filled with the Spirit of God. Again, follow him in death to self. I love this verse. Verily, verily, I say to you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. There must be some dying. If you're going to follow the Lord, if you're going to be Christ-like, you'll have to die to self, and you can die to self. And Paul said, I die daily. Die to the positive, die to the negative, die to compliments, die to criticism, but keep on going. And never fail, never change of it. Then follow him and surrender to God's will. Complete, absolute surrender to the holy will of God. Say, Lord, I want your will to be done. And Christ-likeness, seeking always to obey him and, uh, and uh, uh, join your will and your heart with the heart of God and to say, dear Lord, I want to do what you say with all of my life, not part of it, but every bit of my life.
Not concern yourself with the will of God. Know his will and say to the Lord, I want to do your will. God has a will for you. Here's the answer to your problem, young man, young woman, mother and dad. The holy will of God. His will will bring peace of heart and usefulness of life and for you. But without the will of God, there's unrest and unhappiness and distress. All of these when you turn from the holy will of God. Again, there must be submission to the will of God. Evaluation of your direction, a correct direction, following God's will and doing what God says for your life. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first Lord, send a revival. Let it begin in me. Sing it. Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival. And let it begin in me.